Now I'm going to provide an alternate history to what was presented in the last video. We talked a lot about all of these important figures in the history of GIS in the last video. Waldo Tobler, for instance, developed the first law of geography. Roger Tomlinson developed the first GIS and is called the father of GIS. John Snow demonstrated that visualization of health issues is a spatial problem. Jack Dangerman is the president of Esri who makes ArcGIS. Michael Goodchild defined the difference between GIS and GI science. But what do they all have in common? When I originally was putting together this lecture, it got me thinking. What about all the diversity we're seeing in this field or lack thereof? These men didn't represent or look anything like me. Yet I've been influenced by people in the field who aren't all white men. Don't get me wrong, the field is still definitely male dominated, but what about black mappers, women, indigenous mappers? The history I gave is what is summarized in the main textbook in the field. I used to require it for this class, but it was very expensive, it cost over $100. And I felt that it was focused a lot on white men in the field, probably in part because it was written by white men. But geospatial technology has changed a lot in the past 15 years. I got started in this field in 2006, and I can say without a doubt that it's getting more and more diverse every day. Although I would say that there's still a long way to go. Much of the diversity is through an increase in white women in the field, but as I will explain in this video, concepts like countermapping appeal to those trying to dismantle systems of oppression and contribute to positive social change. I'd like to first say this disclaimer. I'm constantly looking to improve this section of my lecture, so this is a work in progress. If you find something cool that advances knowledge in GI science by Black, Indigenous, people of color, and women, let me know and I'll try to add it. Let's talk first about the history of women in mapping. Judith Tyner, who is a researcher in uh, cartography, said that upon reading a book on the history of cartography in the 1960s, one would think that no women were involved in cartography or the map trades. No women's names were listed in the indices, even if occasionally a woman was mentioned in passing within the text. The history of cartography, mapping, and GIS is largely absent of mentions of women. However, women were vital to mapping efforts and have been identified as cartographers on unsigned maps uh, over the years. One example that Judith Tyner describes in her recent book about women in cartography focuses on women who worked in defense and intelligence during World War II. Tyner calls these military mapping maidens. These women were vital to the defense and intelligence mapping in the 1940s. Beyond World War II, maps were made by women during suffrage movements. Women for a long time made quilts, which often include maps. And then beyond that, during slavery, sometimes unconventional map publication methods were supposedly used to guide escaped slaves through the Underground Railroad. Women in GIS and GI, GI science and cartography isn't really new, but often women have not been cited as much in academic scholarship. They are often not the focus of textbooks and in the history of GI science, yet women were so often there throughout the history of GIS. Maps have often been used as tools of the powerful and often are used to push racism. Redlining is just one example. I'd like you to listen to an NPR segment about redlining that I'll provide on Canvas, which really talks about the kind of use of maps for uh, racist agendas. The world of GI science is still overwhelmingly white. This is slowly changing in books like The Color of Law, which I mentioned um, as a part of that NPR segment that I'd like you to listen to, bring attention to the use of maps for racist goals. In addition, famous Black Americans like W.E.B. Du Bois, a civil rights activist in the early 20th century, was making maps of Black Americans at the time. This is pretty incredible because a lot of those maps from white and black authors have not really made it to the present day. I really recommend this book, which has all of his data visualizations and includes many maps. Much of the mapping cartography and GI science and GIS that we have seen have been focused around governmental mapping. I brought up things like the USGS or NASA. We see this in the US and all around the world. Maps are often government products of 
the data that they collect about their citizens and land within their country. In the US, we have things like the US Census Bureau, NASA, the US Geological Survey or USGIS, USGS map a lot of the land in the US. Countermapping, on the other hand, is a mapping process by, um, by which communities appropriate these state techniques of formal mapping and use their own maps as alternatives. Counter maps became a tool in a broader strategy for advocacy for communities for their claims uh, for rights over land or to show things that maybe aren't shown on other maps. In addition to representing geographic information, these maps negotiate between social, cultural, and historic notions. This tool, counter mapping, is often used by those who have been ignored or who views, whose views and mappings of the world have not been primarily in the mainstream. This often includes indigenous groups and people of color who use maps to represent their knowledge of the world. Counter mapping is growing in popularity for breaking down systems of oppression and allowing mapping to include more diverse views. In addition, things like the Indigenous Mapping Workshop invites indigenous nations to a conference focused entirely on al alternative means and methods of mapping for the advancement of indigenous people. I really suggest that you go and check this out and I'll provide the link on Canvas. Finally, I'd like to draw, you attention, you draw your attention to something that you can do. So the American Association of Geographers or AAG has a lot of specialty groups and the cartography specialty group is one example. And this year uh, they are hosting a cartographies of change paper competition. The abstracts are due in the fall uh, usually near the end of October, and the full papers are due one month before the annual meeting, often in April. The first pr place prize is $300, $200 for the second place, place prize. And they're looking for contributions to the field of cartography and geovisualization, constructive and appropriate consideration of the work's Im implications for dismantling systems of oppression and contributing to positive social and environmental change and it's open to all students, undergrads and grads. I really suggest that if you've got something interesting to show or say that you apply for this competition. Let's recap. Women, black, indigenous and people of color have been left out of GI science or often not given credit even when they were there. Women were vital during World War II but have, been, have left their mark on cartography and GI, GI science throughout the history despite often not getting credit. Redlining and other state-sponsored mapping has pushed racism. There are Black cartographers out there, including many over a century ago, yet few have gotten or been given the same credit as white cartographers. Countermapping allows communities to push back against existing power structures through the act of mapping. And finally, Indigenous mapping is gaining notoriety, notoriety through projects like the Indigenous Mapping Workshop. And again, if you have any ideas or things that you've noticed or seen, please let me know. I'd love to improve this section. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.